Now, the PDC have said that a decision on the world match play will be made by uh, Friday the 5th of June, if not earlier. Uh, what do you envisage happening with the uh, what most people would agree is second most prestigious event on the calendar? It's a tough one. And yeah, Tuesday last week, the uh, the PDC put out a uh, an update on the world match play saying they've been in regular contact with the UK government. And um, yeah, we're, we're eight weeks away now, I think eight or nine weeks away now from what would be the start date of the world match play, the July the 18th. And PDC are saying that by the 5th of June or on that date, they're going to make a decision. And their, their plans really are at the moment, if they can't get it to be played on that day, 18th to the 26th of July, at the plans right now are they don't want to cancel the event completely there. What they would like to do is push the event back to, to later in the year, later in 2020 and, and try and get the event played. But it's um it's difficult if if it does get postponed. There's not a lot of dates where you could fit in the, the nine days without affecting other events and maybe they do squeeze it into a, a shorter period of time, less than nine days. But as you touched on there with the crowds as well, they'll want to get the, the match play on with the crowd. It's um it's one of the biggest events there is on the calendar. I, I believe it's the, the second biggest on the calendar. Such a special event. But if, if they're not allowed to have the crowds in, then I, I think they probably would look to, to push it further back. And as we spoke about on our last uh, podcast that we did together about the qualifying criteria, when you've got not many events going towards it this year and uh, and last year, like you would on a, a usual year, then they probably would want to get some events in first before their first event back is the, the second biggest event of the year. Yeah, I'm in agreement there. And I mean, if it can go ahead without a crowd, it's not the end of the world because it's very possible that you're going to have to go ahead for, if not, for much of the rest, if not the entire rest of the season without a crowd. And as you said, it's the second most important event in the calendar. That said, unless you make some sort of change, and I think I talked about it last show or two shows ago, maybe expanding the field to make it fit more fair and to give more players an opportunity to plan it, you've completely curtailed the qualification structure for it and the qualification system for it. And it's not going to, it's just not going to be the same if this is the first event back or one of the first event backs and we've had half the qualifying season gone. I think postponing it makes the most sense. Um, you, If you're able to play that time even behind closed doors, then that's a great time to start catching up on the uh, players' championship events, especially if the players are able to travel to it. We still don't know what the case is going to be like in two months, and it's tough to say whether Kyle Anderson and Damon Hatter will be able to get there from Australia, whether Jeff Smith will be able to get there from Canada, let alone some of the uh, players from continental Europe as travel restrictions slowly ease and flights have to start coming back, let alone the travel restrictions. You also need the flights to exist. And maybe that will be a good time to, if you're able to play, to not have the world match play, but to have 10 players championship events over a couple weeks. I don't think the match play will go ahead at that time, but I do think it will go ahead this year. I think we might see some of the other events get canceled, but this one will eventually be played, even if uh, the Winter Gardens doesn't actually see action until closer to winter.